as the uh, title screen says here, uh, welcome back to Deponia. Specifically, this is Chaos on Deponia, the second installment into the aim. I believe it ended with us kind of sailing away, headed towards the um, floating black market, which, given this nautical looking thing, I'm going to assume we made it to the floating black market. But let's hop in. What's this all about? Isn't that Ms. Hinkle's junk press? No, that's the junk press from my trawler. You need to help me fix it. Yeah, but it looks exactly like Ms. Hinkle's junk press from the tutorial in part one. So what? Who's going to notice? Those who played part one don't even need a tutorial. Yeah, but I bet they're going to play it through anyway, because they just can't get enough of me. Count me out. I'm definitely not going to suffer through this whole tutorial thing again. I mean, it was stupid enough the first time around. Ah, come on. A little repetition can't hurt. Then how do you explain this blister? That is where I burned myself when I repeatedly put my hand on a hot stove. You never learn, do you? <laughs> Au contraire, I have a, a nearly photographic memory. Do you now? So, do you remember how to use the interface in order to talk to someone? Yes, of course. I, uh, uh, um... Go ahead. Talk to me. Just point the cursor at me and left click as soon as the speech balloon icon appears. No prompting! I will say this. I was slow clapping during this whole thing. You've forgotten everything, right? No, I haven't. Then why don't you start talking to me? Just point the cursor at me. Will you stop? You know, that would trigger some amusing dialogue. How exciting! Fine. Uh, talk to Bozo. You don't have to say that aloud. Hey, who's talking to you? Hello there. You clicked on me. Yeah, and I regret it already. But you see, there's nothing left here that you could teach me. You don't even know, um... How to look at an object. But I already know that. I see. And how? I point at it with my mouse cursor and right click when the eye icon appears. Nonsense! That's not an eye. It's a ping pong ball. With a pupil? Yeah, it's loaded. Why would they use a loaded ping pong ball as an icon for the action examine? I'm about to demonstrate that using the small object lying on the ground over there by pointing the cursor at it and right-clicking as soon as the ping-pong ball appears. I'm holding my breath. What's that? It's the reactor lead head. But it was a cathode plunger in the last game. It's the lead head, believe me. You need it to repair the press. And how exactly am I going to do that if I can't even pick the thing up? Sure you can pick it up. Just point at it with the mouse to make the hand icon appear. Then left click to pick it up. Oh no, this has to be easier. <sighs> huh? Where'd it go? <laughs> you put it in your inventory. You know, where all your items go. You pick the thing up. Now use the mouse wheel to open the inventory. Hey, there it is. Exactly. Now this is your inventory. I knew that. Here you can view all the stuff you're lugging around. You remember how to do that, don't you? Look here, Bozo. I fixed the part. I won't believe that until I see it in operation. I know. My handyman skills are really incredible. Still haven't fixed the clicking issues. It fits. Next, you need to... Hey, you don't have to spoon-feed me. I'll manage the rest. Whatever. We're not gonna learn, though. When We're you're ready, gonna get you need to. Hold your horses, will ya? It's just a button. I think I can manage without your help. Rufus, don't. You're standing right under the... Don't panic. You don't think I'd fall for the same feeble gag twice. So, uh, what was that again? I pushed this button here... And then... Didn't look all that feeble to me. They came out of nowhere. With their cruisers, plasma weapons, and mechanical beards. Organized. 
They took our village by force. They left nothing behind but tears and devastation. They were looking for gold. And Elysium, the girl that fell from the sky. And only one person was prepared to save her. He woke her up. Contacted her fiance. And took her to the lower ascension station. Only to learn the shocking truth once he got there. Cletus, Gold's fiance, wasn't acting out of love. He had an agreement. With Ulysses, the mysterious leader of the Organon. And Argus, his right hand. They needed the Ascension Codes, hidden away in Gold's brain implant. And they wanted to erase her memory. They wanted to make sure no Elysian would ever know that our world is inhabited. For their goal was terrible beyond imagination. They wanted to blow up our world. But they had failed to reckon with the one. He swapped the cartridges. And he restored Gold's memory so that she could bear the truth to Elysium. The name of this one man, this selfless hero, was Rufus. Um, that wasn't the whole story, was it? That was the first part. I think it's going to be a trilogy. Sounds a bit unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievably cool. But if it really all happened like that, shouldn't I be on my way to Elysium with Cletus? So what are you doing here? Where is Cletus? Why am I unable to remember any of this? And forgive me for asking, but... Why is there a burning saw blade stuck in the side of the ship? Oh, uh, that. Oh, well, I was about to get to that part. So listen up. You're being pathetic. Again about accurate bacteria in the fridge, it's getting boring. But packing bags due to the tea socks, I threw to clamshades, rim order, some anodons gone. Didn't I explicate it? Are you still not persuaded? This grass growing on your time, panic membrane. Remember to pull yourself, sacrifices, and oh gosh, not to start all over again. Bizarre. Trash. Trash. And more trash. Isn't it adorable? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Hard to imagine I ever wanted to leave here. Ah, Rufus. This is the lad I was telling you about. What? Him? From what you told me, I had imagined a smart young man, not a filthy bum. There's more to him than meets the eye. When I first met him, Rufus was still a... How shall I put this? Just say it. I was a self-indulgent slob, but I'm steadily improving. That's right. Right now, for example, he is helping Bozo to get the trawler shipshape. So I am. I was going to ask you whether I can borrow your hammer. No problem. You can take it from my toolbox over there. Thanks, Doc. You're the best. 
I still don't know, really. Something just doesn't seem right about that boy. But Grandma Utz, whatever are you talking about? Hmm. Cheap and unlock. Huzzah! One more from the top. Aren't you worried he might steal something? I trust him completely. Didn't you tell me that he suffers from an exaggerated opinion of himself? Those days are over. Rufus has learned a lot. He is much more careful than before. Rufus seems like a brutal thug to me. Rufus? Brutal? <laughs> Never. I'm scared to open the bathroom door after that, uh, incident. saying is that he seems very clumsy. Your fears are completely groundless. Rufus has become very careful since his last adventure. Did he even wash his hands? Of course he did. Rufus is very clean. That's good. I have a very limited supply of water. I'm just gonna stick my hand in the box for a sec. And then and I'm gonna pull that box cover. If he has to use the toilet, then he can do that on the trawler. Of course, Grandma. It's just that I have hardly any water left. He's just getting a hammer. I have the hammer, but uh, I think I'm supposed to do something and, like, get rid of the bird. May I interrupt for a moment? Of course. Did you find the hammer? Well, not exactly. It's in my tool chest. You're welcome to take it. As long as you promise not to wreak havoc. <laughs> not me. Hmm. If that's all true, then he must have turned himself around 180 degrees. That's how it is. As if someone installed a power inverter in him. Oh, this is going to end well. And he shouldn't give John Thomas too much to drink under any circumstances. Well, if that's all you're worried about... Something like that can kill a little bird. Rufus isn't going to drown your bird by accident. He would ask before he used my water supply, wouldn't he? Absolutely. Good. Good. I have to get by on what I have until the end of the month. Perhaps I'm worrying unnecessarily. After all, John Thomas is very good at self-defense. Oh, Grandma Utz, as if that would be at all necessary. I just hope he doesn't turn my whole house upside down. 
He's just getting a hammer. How much damage could he possibly do? Can a person really change so much? It's very simple. Once burned, twice shy. And Rufus has burned his fingers more than once. He has learned. I would <laughs> bet the house on it. May I interrupt for a moment? Of course. Did you find the hammer? Well, it's in your welcome as long as not me. May I interrupt? Of course. Did you find your welcome as long as not me? Where did I get the tablecloth from? You almost have me convinced. Oh, I stole it from that. I thought it burned up. One thing that still worries me. He had better not clog my garbage disposal. The blades are so sharp. Things are always getting caught in there. Oh, Grandma. You worry about the silliest things. I did not clog the garbage if you disposal. you promise me that he will be careful, then everything is all right. Just as long as nothing happens to my John Thomas. Promise. Hmm. Then I should apologize. I suppose your Rufus really must have improved. Well, what do you know? Here it is. Have you found it at last? Uh, yeah, sure. It certainly took you long enough. I hope you didn't leave a mess. Me? No way. But enough chit-chat. Bozo's waiting. Just relax, Rufus. It's not like anything's on fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. By the way, what's that funky smell? Rufus, have you gone completely off the deep end? You almost set Grandma Utz's heart on fire. All for a good cause. You committing suicide? No, I'm traveling to Elysium. But Rufus, we've been through all that. I thought you would finally become reasonable. Become reasonable? I am reasonable. And that's exactly why my plan is gonna work this time. What plan are you talking about? Well, what does it look like? It looks like a madman's attempt to refute the principle of action and reaction. Close enough. Goodness gracious me. As soon as I step on these bellows, the cork will hit the three targets one by one. In a spectacular chain reaction, this will cause the rockets to be lit and the safety rope to be cut. I have calculated everything. Just watch and learn. Oh, and keep away from the falling blade if you want to hold on to your fingers. Second, the cork will ricochet off this pan. I seriously doubt that. On what do you base this assumption? Well, I drew a target on it, didn't I? Oh, heavens. The first target opens the gas tap on the Bunsen burner, which then lights the fuse. Isn't it more probable that the cork will simply knock over the Bunsen burner? My design is based on science, not some nebulous probabilities. The calculation of probabilities is an integral component of all sciences. <laughs> For you, maybe. My science is based on hearsay and inner conviction. 
After the cork ricochets off the other two targets, it will hit exactly here. I've calculated everything precisely. How did you calculate that? Well, the way you calculate things. Y you lie down for a while, and these mathematical formulas come to you in your sleep. All right, well, when we come back next time, we're going to hit this bellows and see what happens. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please do a like. Bye.